Okay. Hello. My name is Shane Brody. I am traveling around the country talking to various kinds of trans people because we have a very, very diverse community. And uh, I'm very excited because there's somebody I'm going to talk to tonight that of who uses uh, words that I have never heard before, and they're going to define these things for me, and, and I'm very excited about that. And uh, they're of a very different generation, very much younger, um, so that's exciting. And they love dogs, and, and my dog has really t been taken with this person, and I'm just excited about that. Um, you know... I, you know, I figure, you know, when people say that dogs are really good judges of character, I, I very much trust that. Absolutely. And he's, he's enjoying laying on the couch over here. <laughs> he's getting spoiled. Anyway, so I'm going to hand it over to my guests here, and they're going to introduce themselves in, in the way that they feel comfortable with. Okay. Um, I am Magnus. I am Demi Male, which is under the trans mask non-binary spectrum which i'll go into the, all that in a little bit um i'm ace i'm 25 i've just started my transition uh hormonally i've been on hormones for three months now so yeah i'm asexual um i'm polyamorous so definitely a different a different generation yeah. well actually polyamorous has been for, that, around for quite a while yeah but it's the um a asex asexual? asexuality and then uh demi which demi I, ha I have no idea what that's about yeah. so we should talk about that yeah um which one would you like to hear first whichever okay so demi male is on the non-binary spectrum okay. so it's somebody who primarily um considers themselves non-binary but is transitioning and also uses he him so, so when you like say a, transitioning do you mean uh physically like taking hormones and that sort of thing or uh are you talking physically legal? or socially okay. or legally okay so it's somebody, those are all different things yeah. yeah so it's all different things but they're uh pursuing <clears throat> in some way hmm. transition and they don't have to pursue transition it's just like usually somebody who identifies on more of a non-androgyny spectrum that is non-binary oh you lost me so non-androgyny spectrum what is that so like they don't they don't identify in the center so say it's a linear line and you have okay. male and female and non-binary where you're in the middle okay. they're identify right between male and non-binary so they're oh, okay. not all the way male not all the way non-binary okay. they're like right in the middle okay okay so yeah. It's you identify as both and neither. It's okay. it's a hard thing to explain, but it is uh, becoming more and more common. There's also demi girls, mm -hmm. um, and then some people just use demi gender if they kind of flux between those two. Okay, and so when you say flux, what do you mean by that? Uh, almost like gender queer, so mm -hmm. uh, or gender fluid. Um, so sometimes people. Uh, who are demigender will identify as demi male or demi female at different points in time. Mm. Um, but it's more along the lines of gender fluid. Mm -hmm. um, so they just kind of fluctuate, but they throughout never, the spectrum. They never kind of. go all the way feet. All the way to like mm. the female um, mm -hmm. aspect of the spectrum or the male aspect of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. They stay in the non-binary zones, but mm -hmm. lean more one way or the other. Okay. So at different times. At different times. Okay. So it just is kind of how they are uh, presenting or like how they are feeling inside um, at different mm -hmm. points in time. Okay. Um, and then the ace. Asexuality mm -hmm. means I don't experience sexual attraction. I mm -hmm. only experience the romantic attraction. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yes. So that's separated out. Yes. Okay. And a lot of people don't realize that you can be... Rom it's it's like the easiest way to say it is, I, have you ever thought somebody is so hot, but you would never um, do stuff with them? Or they have like, you say this person has the most wonderful personality, but you want to go there with them. Um, it's like that because your sexual orientation and your romantic orientation are two different things. You have a mm. romantic attraction and sexual attraction, and mm. I don't feel that sexual attraction ever. Okay. So, so, uh, when, when, for me, they're very close, unfortunately. Yes. Um, you're okay. So when, when you separate those things out, uh, what does an only romantic attraction entail? So 
the easiest way to put it is yeah. um, like plutonic <clears throat> with extra steps. Okay. <laughs> That's just the easiest way to explain it. It's, extra steps. Yes, extra steps plutonic. So um, because I love my partners and I love my partners just like I would anyone in a relationship, mm. I just don't experience sexual attraction to them. I see. So, so it's more... Um, it's not a friends, deep companionship. But yes, it's like okay. a deep companionship. Okay. Yeah, I think that sometimes people who are married go through that too. Yeah. Because sometimes uh, sexuality will wax and wane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's very common. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, this might be a little bit of a controversial question, and I, and I hope it isn't. Um, okay. But um, maybe there's a, a better way to say it, and if it is, you know, um, please tell me. But why are all these categories important? Why, why, it, why um, um, have so many names for things, I guess? Uh, it just allows me to more accurately, dis- accurately describe how I'm feeling inside. Mm. It okay. gives me a way to, ex- even if somebody hasn't ex- like heard the terms like you before, yeah. you sat back and was like, okay, what are these? What do they yeah. mean to you? Mm-hmm. And so it opens a dialogue, but it also gives me an accurate representation to explain what I feel on the inside. Mm. Does it feel um, like protective or is validating. it... Validating. It feels okay, validating. validating. Okay. Okay. Sometimes, uh, sometimes when I use uh, words to describe myself, it's also, there's a protective part, but I think that's, that comes from, uh, you know, kind of a history of just having a lot of intrusions or a lot of non-consent in my life, right? Yeah. People intruding on my, on me or doing things, um, or threatening to do things without my consent. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you experienced that, but... I have, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, a large part of our community has. That's, that's correct. Um, so do you think that that putting some of these labels out there uh, is protective at all? Or is it more positive, like you said, more like you're just um, affirming it, who you are? I feel like it's a combination. Is I it? feel okay. like, for me specifically, it's more validating than protective. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. But Well, that's great. I have that's friends great. who are ace who feel the more protective mm part of that yeah Mm -hmm. um and it suits them better yeah we also well you also mentioned uh gender queer and gender fluid yes those seem a little bit like older terms and i say that because oh i did not know that oh no 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 okay no no no. i i just say that uh because i used to use uh at least gender queer and also some people like sort of behind me use gender fluid but, mm-hmm. And then you're using terms that are even newer, mm-hmm. right? So it's, it's a little bit generational. Um, my understanding of genderqueer is that a lot of people stopped using it uh, for some reason. Do you know about that? No, I did not know. Okay. Cause like, even while I was in high school, uh, mm. there were still people identifying as gender, okay. gender queer. Okay. Yeah. There, I think there was a little controversy about it cause people didn't want to specifically, um, think of it as a queer linked or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, at least in my generation, we've taken that word as a more positive. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And definitely. so I think that that's not as much of an issue now. Mm-hmm. I don't know about younger generations than sure. me, but, um, my, one of my partners it identifies as gender queer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, and I think it's a fun word. Yeah. And she's 21 and yeah. That's just like her identifying. Yeah. Um, it it kind of reminds me of like, like uh, when I was using it, kind of, I used it kind of prior or, and at the beginning of transitioning. Uh, Cause for me, I felt like I was actually, I was always in the middle, mm-hmm. you know, like growing up and that yeah. sort of thing. But then also with transitioning, um, you know, I had characteristics like the beard and breasts that yeah. kind of really posited me right in the middle yes. somewhere right um so i and i thought it was a really fun term um it kind of reminded me of like old rockers or something even though they didn't use that they yeah. used like glam and you know that that those kind of terms yes. or whatever or bisexual a lot of people put a lot of gender terms into bisexual like yeah 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 mm. Uh, the way, cause my husband is bi, um, mm. and the way that 
Oh, that's something we could talk yeah, about because I'm there's, married. <laughs> there's a little bit of well, marriage yeah. as well, but also um, there seems to be a little controversy around bisexuality. There's a lot of convert- controversy around bisexuality yeah. and pansexuality, yes. and I'm pan romantic, mm. so I still get that um, controversy. Yeah. And, yeah, talk, talk about that a little bit. So a lot of it is uh, one community or the other. And by one community or other, either the bi community or the pan community thinks mm. that the other term is exclusionary. Mm. Um, but that's where I come back to my point where it's just for people, it's what is validating to them. And I don't think either one is exclusionary personally. Because mm. the way my husband explains it is how I would explain pan is he's just... He's bi in the sense that it's more than one. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And so, but that's how I would explain pan. I'm not attracted to any one particular gender. Yeah. Um, and I have no problem with anybody of gender. If I like you, I like you mm. romantically. And that's yeah. how he feels, but he uses the term bisexuality. Yeah. And there's a history behind bisexuality mm-hmm. as well. If, if we get rid of that term, I, I think in some ways we're kind of getting rid of that history as well yeah you know and there's there's a lot of people who use it and there's a lot of people who use it kind of interchangeably yeah you know like they'll use bi or queer or some some people are using pan actually my my history of the word pan is a little bit different i talked about this with somebody else um pan at least in my experience came out of the straight community i did not know that yeah uh because they all of the um uh, the lesbian bars uh, were kind of closing because a lot of lesbians were coming becoming sober, and then gay men, um, uh, they you know they were very ill for a long time. You know there weren't any good drugs and that sort of thing, and so um, kind of these uh, gay and lesbian spaces were kind of uh, less. Mm-hmm. You know, and so straight straight people were like, well, come and hang out with us. You know, come party with us, basically. And so they called their parties and whatever get-togethers pansexual. It's like everybody's welcome. Um, so that's that's my my knowledge of it. And this was like in the in the '90s and kind of the mid '90s. Um, but I'm glad that that term has actually evolved and become more queer over the over the yeah. T- over it was time. like now it just means everyone is welcome yes. gender wise. Yeah. We embrace yeah. everyone, and if we like like you or we love you, we yeah. just like you or love you. Yeah, because those those early kind of pan events or whatever were usually 98 percent straight people, and I'm talking very straight too. Yeah, like unsafe kind of. Oh God, for queer people. Yeah, yeah, and then there would be a, like me and. Like, like gay, two others, yeah, yeah. somebody like, else, <laughs> like a dyke or a gay guy or something, and it was like, hmm, okay, well, we're just gonna hang out and drink our our beer, or whatever, in the corner, and <laughs> you know, yeah, and complain. Um, anyway, I'm glad that it's evolved over time, though. I I think that's an interesting shift, though, from the straight community to queer, and then, you know, I I wonder if there's a similar shift the other way, like. Uh, if the straight community is all is at all influenced by some of the terminology that you're talking about, mm-hmm. have you found that out at all? Um, a lot of times, it's just confusion yeah. and need mm. need of education because okay. uh, they these things don't apply to them, and so a lot you don't of think times. So? Well, what and by that I mean like these terminologies don't fit them personally, so a mm. lot of times they don't think about it or mm-hmm. they don't take. The proper it seems like, like seems education. Like, on seems it. like ace would though. You know that ace. I mean, yeah, because you can be people, straight and ace, and right. that's what a lot of people don't right. understand. Which that has started to evolve. Mm. I have straight ace friends. Yeah, who I would think so. Have learned about it as they've gotten older and been yeah. like, oh my god, that's what I. W- there was nothing wrong with me. I'm just asexual. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, asexual used to be more like um, a shameful thing, or yeah. like, oh, you just, oh, you just can't find a partner, or it's still like that. There's still a it? lot of there's still a lot of stigma around ace. There's still people. Well, I can fix you. That do that whole oh, thing. Yeah, um, I that, remember that when I was a lesbian, I got a lot of that too from yep. straight men. Yep. Um, I, I don't think so. <laughs> and and gay men get a lot of it from straight women. Right. That's true. It's yeah. just no matter. I feel like no matter where you are in the sexuality department, you're gonna get some of that somewhere, and that right. is so unfortunate. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I meant by that whole protective thing. Like it's yeah. you know very clear. Yeah. A clear clearness. A clear boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. Which, mm-hmm. and then, so, and then 
So this one's hard to talk about because okay. there's asexuality is a spectrum like non-binary is a mm. spectrum. Okay. So there's sex repulsed asexual, oh, um, mm. which they don't want anything to do with that kind of thing at sure, all. Sure. And then there's people who like get into other parts of that. Mm. And so there's different types of asexuals. And so you fall, there's like subcategories, but the broad term is asexual. Okay. Yeah, I myself is am, my specific term would be a gray asexual. So it's I don't feel sexual attraction. That's just not my thing. Mm. I'm not like repulsed by like uh, sex itself, but it's not my cup of tea. Okay. Have fun doing your guys's thing. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um. Where did you uh, learn these terms? Uh, Because I'm I'm assuming that you didn't come up with them yourself. No, (laughs) absolutely not. Did not come up with them with them myself. Um, My generation's raised on the internet, so that's a huge spot. Um, But also, in high school, we had a gay straight alliance, Mm. um, which those aren't really around anymore. Right, but before GSAs, yeah, GSAs, those aren't around anymore. Well, they're called Mm. something different. What are they called now? I can't remember. I know towards the end of my high school, it's a more inclusive name. Okay. Um, It's a more inclusive name. And then they weren't always used what they were supposed to be used for. Oh. Um, So at my high school, but we also live in the Bible Belt. So keep that in mind. Okay. This might not be a universal thing. Did you grow up here, by the way? Yes. Okay. Okay. This could just be an Oklahoma thing or like a South thing. Sure. Sure. Um, they were used to bring people to LGBT in and then it would open a dialogue and then people who would claim to be allies would come in. They weren't really allies oh. and would try to like, like harass people. Well, not something. even harass. They would just try to be your friend and then make you see differently. Oh, I see. So, I see. Okay. Yeah. Like, it was um, a lot of stuff like some that. Bible wis- uh, witnessing kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah, but they tried to do it like, uh, so, sub- like covertly okay. they didn't do it out in the open they tried to act like they were your friend and then mm, would bring it in over that's time terrible. that's it's terrible unfortunate wow um and again that might just be a south issue because it's bible belt sure so sure. i don't know that that's a everywhere issue but mm. that's what happened here and that's why mm. kind of like we don't have a lot of gsa stuff anymore yeah I, you know i haven't talked to a lot of people who've been in gsa's i you know it once again it was kind of a different generation yeah. than me um, but I've never heard of that before. I, I'm, 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 I'm willing to bet though that it's happened before. <laughs> I well, don't doubt it. Yeah. I'm, it's, I, it's, I think it's just part, it's so unfortunate of living in a red state mm, like we do mm. with people who are not as accepting as they should be. Yeah. It, um, you know, I've only been here a couple of days and what I've noticed is, um, yeah, this is this might sound a little strange, but mm-hmm. I've had interactions with people who I find that they're extremely polite. Yes, almost polite to where it's like several def- decades ago that like people were yeah. being polite in that particular way. Like I just don't find that in other places, and I I'm finding that I'm a little bit too urban with them. Let's say mm-hmm. like I'm like right now. I'm, you know, maybe a little demanding or something, and I'm, like, bewildered at, like, uh, how maybe slow people move. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's uh, what a lot of people from out of state say. My yeah. husband's from Washington, yeah. so I've yeah. I've heard all of it. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be really polite about this, but it's... it's okay. But that's kind of what I've noticed. Like, um, maybe a little naivete. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering um, if people have even had any exposure to this kind of thing, and and what it was like, you know, kind of, I guess, growing up here or, or your, oh or your everyday kind of experience, so, because you're definitely, you know, you're, you're very tall. Yeah. Um, you're, uh, if I were to see you out on the street, maybe, I mean, maybe this is not a good thing to say, but I would think you were a little bit, um, androgynous, you know, that's, I like, I prefer that. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I don't always pass as androgynous mm-hmm. and so it can get really um hard sometimes Mm -hmm. because while people can be really polite they're really polite if you pass for what they want to perceive you as oh i see um if you don't fit 
like a societal standard here Mm. you're you don't get quite the same treatment Mm. or it's a different kind of polite where they're uh, backhandedly polite Mm. Uh, what's it what would be an example of the backhanded politeness um so that is going to be a lot of like how a lot of afab people do the like catty remarks where they're complimenting you but they're not complimenting you Mm. oh i really love that shirt where did you get it Mm. um stuff like that they'll do that but like about your like presentation so Mm. they will be like oh here let me help you to i'm disabled so i'm in a wheelchair most of the time Mm. so that's a big one i get do you need help getting into Mm. the restroom Mm. which one do you need into Mm. um stuff like that Mm -hmm. and they will use that opportunity to kind of make backhanded remarks Mm. Mm. that's interesting because i would think if somebody were asking you which bathroom you use that would be helpful but for you it's it's not no okay okay because a lot of times they're using that to try to get information on whether or not i'm fitting the mold they want me to fit into oh i see so they're using the ruse of helping you to get information about you yeah oh i see okay they're fishing i see yeah um do you ever think that people are being um sincere about that like what's a what's a good way of being sincere like you know because some people are nervous. Yes. You know? I, yeah. Who knows why? But There's, they're nervous around, like, people who are disabled or... So, as somebody who's disabled, mm. you... It's hard to explain the difference, but it's yeah. very, like, as a disabled person, yeah. easy to tell the difference. Yes, yes. I get you. So... I get you. But what is that difference um, that you A lot of times it's tone. Okay. Because a nervous person, you can usually tell they're nervous by their tone. Mm. Um mm-hmm. And the way that they phrase things. So, um, but they're being sincere. Yeah, they're being sincere. Mm -hmm. So if they're nervous and they're being sincere, they'll be like, uh, do you need assistance getting to the restroom? They won't ask which restroom you need. Mm. They'll be like, do you, do you need me or my husband to help you? Mm. If they're, uh, AFAB or AMAB, they'll be like, do you need me or my partner to help you? If they don't know which one you need, but they're not like purposely like, trying to assist you into a specific bathroom they ask you and then they'll move on their way instead of like keep insisting yeah or after or take the no at its face if, value if, yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah if you're nervous and, and you're sincere on. you'll take the no at the face value yeah. usually yeah um i've met a couple of like sincere people who don't take the no at the face value but it's a very simple are you sure i say no again and they move on so it's just like a very quick Whereas if somebody is fishing for that information, they'll kind of push it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, right. They won't back off. Mm-hmm. Like it takes it's a lot a, to get them to back it's off. It's a plan. Yeah. Yeah. It's a plan. Because you saying yeah. no is interrupting what they were wanting mm-hmm. to do. Right. Right. So. They're probably sitting off and probably watching and thinking, hmm. How can I do yeah, this? How yeah. can I, how can I, it's like a plan to, to, to yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, yeah, or sometimes people help uh, as a way to look good. Yeah. Yeah. And look too. at me, I'm a good person. And that that's still is the same respect. While it might not be like targeting gender, it's targeting me because I'm disabled and they want to make themselves feel yes. better or yes. look better. And right. those people are not sincere. So they'll do right. the same thing where they kind of push it. Right. They don't back off right. immediately. Oh, are you sure, honey? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. <laughs> and that's where I say, like, they can be polite and yes. still be predatory. Yes. In yeah. their politeness. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so, kind of, you know, on that topic again, what is it, what is it like being here in Oklahoma, in a smaller city in Oklahoma? This is not uh, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Although Tulsa isn't doesn't seem that much different, uh, maybe it is. I don't know. It, it's big, but it's it's not like as big as OKC for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. OKC is immense. Yeah, it's intense. <laughs> yeah, too. it's uh, yeah. I, I don't know much about the culture here, so um, yeah. What's it What's it like? So we have a pretty decent like LGBT plus group here. Mm. Um, is it real tight? It's you know? tight knit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we, you can find, you can sometimes find that in places that seem, that are seemingly more hostile. 
Yeah. It's almost like people have to get together. So we do. Then, then they get it's along better. It's the herd mentality. Yeah. We're safer in our yeah. herd, mm-hmm. so we travel together. Right. Um, and I think it's just like a lot of like instinctual stuff. Like yeah. you find your people and you stay with your people because those people are safe. Right. So we have Keep a pretty... Keep each other safe. Like yeah. we have a pretty decent sized group, but not very big because it is a hard... It's a hard state to mm. to not be uh, cis normative in. Right. So have you have you because uh, you you grew up here? Mm-hmm. Have you known people who just are like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go to I, the coast, or I gotta me, go down to Texas? I or... am uh, in a few years uh, getting out of Oklahoma to Washington. Okay, my husband's finishing up school, and then we're out of here. Washington Let's, State or DC? Washington State. Okay, right. yeah, um, mm-hmm. it's just not safe with okay. our current mm. governor and all the events happening it's okay. just yeah unsafe. tell me about that tell me about that um which thing uh the state being unsafe so um because there's, there's a lot going on pause it for a second because sure. i want to make sure this is okay okay uh i was just mentioning that i've had to look this up several times because things keep changing and then I Mm -hmm. look up a state and then I'm like well what about the state next to it or you know like my head starts to go other places and uh, so we just looked it up and uh, what did it have to say Um, that with Oklahoma the only exception is to save the pregnant woman's life so that doesn't include cases of assault or Mm -hmm. incest unfortunately right right. so uh, yeah that's horrific actually that is absolutely horrific Um, yeah it also doesn't include ages, so wow. that is unfortunate. So uh, we're we're talking about like if a girl, a young, born. yeah, a yeah. very young mm-hmm. girl, right? It doesn't include that wow. unless it is medically wow. threatening to That's her crazy. life. If she can find a doctor that will rule that way, then she can get it done. Right. But right. the part hard thing in Oklahoma, which I found out through like wanting to get mm-hmm. sterilized doctors don't like liability Mm, yes and for them they have to prove that that is life-threatening or they can lose their license here right so that's a insurance thing that's a uh probably a medical board kind Mm -hmm. of thing which uh, doctors have to be licensed right Mm -hmm. uh through their boards and then that's also a state thing right so i i understand that pressure but Doctors also have to do the right thing by people. Yeah. You know, but I think... Unfortunately, a lot of them don't. Yeah, I don't think that's happening right now. I mean, uh, just in my experience as being a trans person the last, you know, whatever, 25 years out, that it's very hard to find any doctors who will do anything with you, you know, who will work with you as a trans person, even it, you know, it being legal, Mm -hmm. you know. And then we know that abortion clinics have also been reduced around the sorry yeah, okay. uh, around the country. Um, I I think I was reading about Oklahoma, and there's hardly any even before. Yeah, we have this like, ruling specifically Planned Parenthoods, which are not an abortion clinic. They provide a spectrum of care. Yes, I want to state that. Right. But we and preventative care and even planning Planned Parenthood. Yeah. I believe we've only got one in Tulsa now yeah I think our other one closed we had two but I'm I'm wondering what they're doing now you know I mean if it's illegal uh yeah that's that's pretty awful yeah. um yeah I, I it, I'm I'm very worried <laughs> I'm very worried about this um yeah yep yeah. And in Oklahoma, we actually, I don't know if you've read about it Mm. at all, we do have a Native American woman who Mm, was convicted um, for a miscarriage. Oh, yes. So we do have, we have on, like, when all of this was just starting, Mm. it's very unfortunate and they're... Yeah, I've, I've, I've... I, I don't know. It's very hard to sometimes parse what is what. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying that's not true. Yeah. But I keep hearing other things too, like um, if um, if there's you know something that a, a medication that could possibly harm yeah. the child. Cho- the um, she was taking fetus. a blood pressure medication, right? For her blood pressure, right? And then doctors might be more interested in not giving medications to women because, because life-saving they, medications because they could be pregnant yes. or they could get pregnant 
Yes. That right. is something I've run into yeah. as a disabled person. Wow, really? Yes. Um, because I still, unfortunately, have my reproductive organs okay. intact. Yeah. Not for long. Okay. <laughs> I All did right. finally find a doctor, which we can talk about that, too. Sure. Okay. Um, but I have had doctors in the past deny me certain pain management mm. medications because and i'm not talking like opioids i'm talking non-addictive just barely stronger than ibuprofen sure. pain sure. management for my nerve damage okay um because they are like well you could get pregnant and this would cause a miscarriage oh wow wow i haven't heard of that i've heard of you know them kind of putting that all in the category of drug addiction or that you you know being dr- drug seeking or whatever yeah. you know i haven't well, heard about yeah because i a lot of doctors won't call me drug seeking because i'm in physical therapy and i'm taking uh, active measures okay um and i'm in a position insurance wise that unfortunately a lot of my disabled mm. uh community doesn't necessarily have where i okay. have really good insurance oh, wonderful wonderful and i'm able to pursue those uh, yeah. amazing things yeah. that help me yeah and so it's, it's so helped. it's so rare that i meet somebody that has good insurance yes. i gotta say <laughs> um it's helped because it's covering some of my transition stuff yeah. it's oh, covering good. Good, my good. physical therapy good. Um, I was able to get a new wheelchair, which I desperately needed. Oh, yeah. And those um, are so expensive. Those are yeah. extremely expensive. Yeah. If I would have had to pay out of pocket, it costs, so, sorry, yeah. it costs more than a new car. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, it's that a, much? Yeah. My wheelchair would have been 21 K out of pocket. Oh. Wow, I didn't. I was thinking thousands, but not like I still tens have to pay thousands. even with good insurance. <laughs> I'm still having to pay almost two thousand out of pocket. Oh my, oh my goodness! Oh yeah. wow, I had no idea that it was tens of thousands of dollars for something that is a necessity in my life. Right, right, yeah. Um, do you have a good one, by the way? I do. Good, I, good. I do. Good. Uh, it was hell getting it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they definitely make it a lot harder than it should be, but yeah. it is a wonderful wheelchair and it has, um, absolutely given me my independence yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to work for, um, a man named Neil Marcus who mm-hmm. was a, uh, he passed away, uh, recent, relatively recently. Um, and he had a, he used a, uh, electric chair Occasionally, um, it would break down, and we would have to take it to um, uh, somebody who would fix it. Mm-hmm. And then we would um, have to use a manual one. Yeah. And it was a very different. It was very different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very. It's different. a lot harder. Um, so on top of like the other stuff that's wrong with me, I have yeah. carpal tunnel. Oh. Yeah. Um, my vehicle, as you saw, is like a little bitty like Ford Focus. Sure, sure. I can't transport my chair in that. No. Insurance doesn't do anything to help with that. It doesn't like. Are you looking for like a, a conversion van or something? Yeah. 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 Eventually. Oh, those or, are so expensive too. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's like the ex- conversion itself costs like tens of thousands of dollars on yes. top of the vehicle cost. Oh, yeah. 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 And so that's been a hard thing to find. So a lot yep. of times, unless I'm at home, I'm only using my chair at home. And mm. then I'm using my manual in public. Oh, no. Which is oh no, just damaging my wrist yeah. some more. Yeah. But yeah. it's what I have the option of. It takes um, so much effort, too. But I can get around my home now, which I couldn't do before. Mm. Mm. Um, I would be in constant pain and I would progressively mm. set myself back in my treatments because I was doing things I wasn't supposed to be doing by right. not using my chair right. and, at my home. Um, yeah. I can do my own dishes now. I don't have to have somebody help me with my dishes. I can do my own dishes now. Do, uh, being in that sort of quandary that you're talking mm-hmm. about, did any of your medical providers um, become irritated with you? Oh, absolutely. But there's Uh, nothing that you can do about that. Yeah, there's nothing I can do about that. I actually lost a job over it. Wow. um, Which is very illegal. Wow. But, yeah. um, They uh, didn't want to wait for me because my wheelchair had broken. They didn't want to wait for my new wheelchair, even though I can't, like... I had a doctor tell mm. them I cannot mm. work without mm. it. It is not possible. Like it's just not physically mm. capable of happening. Mm. Um, doctor sent in a note and everything, and I was still let go um, wow. for that reason. Wow. Um, this is a little bit personal, but um, mm-hmm. have you ever tried to go for, um, you know, government 
disability. disability. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually am working on getting a hold to a disability lawyer because yeah. that's the whole thing with disability. It's very hard because it takes sometimes years to get on. Right. Yeah. And everyone pretty much gets denied that first time, yeah. especially yeah. if they have like any capability of walking at yeah. all. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's very difficult. It's a very difficult process and you can't work at all while you're doing that right. process. Right. Yeah. It's almost um, like they, they want to be uh, your, uh, they want you to be absolutely wretched and homeless and not taking care of yourself at all. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Or maybe if you have um, some sort of um, um, mental issue to con- convert, even then to convert to something even more serious. Yeah, you know, like you, they they want that. It's like built in. It's it sucks. It's ridiculous. And so I'm working on trying to find a disability lawyer to assist me. Yeah. With that process, because it's a long process, because I have numerous disabilities. Yeah. So I mm-hmm. definitely qualify. Yeah. 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 But it's just such a long process, and yeah. So I'm working on it. It's just a process. I, it's. I just find it so criminal. Like we have the ADA. Mm-hmm. We have the government has a ton of money that they put towards death. Mm-hmm. and towards corporations we bail out all these corporations all the time and then we have people who are disabled <laughs> who aren't getting shit you know yeah. it just it's 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 absolutely infuriating i mean i our priorities are are, are fucked are very yeah fucked. they're very <laughs> messed up for yeah. sure i don't usually swear this much but like this is bullshit this is such bullshit it is i mean it's just, it makes me so mad. Um, yeah. So good on you for keeping some good spirit about you. Cause yeah. you know, I try I mean, to focus on yeah. the positives. Cause if I focus too hard on the negatives, yeah. I don't think that would go well. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Good boy. Um, <laughs> um, so let's, let's, uh, Let's talk about politics a little bit more. So we were just talking about uh, the abortion um, question, which is um, too bad Oklahoma is going the wrong way because... Absolutely. Yeah. uh, The state is um, oppressing oppressing women and... AFAB AFAB people people. in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So awful. Uh, Making things worse. Y'all are making things worse here. I mean, it's, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, and all that. Just imagine all the um, and then trying energy to, to to actually do all these things, mm-hmm. like to su- suppress people. They're putting so much effort into it. And then on top of that, trying to get any type of sterilization in Oklahoma is a nightmare. So I was super lucky that I was able to find a doctor, and I found it, believe it or not, through TikTok. They have a sterilization friendly list going around TikTok of doctors throughout the country. So when you say sterilization, do you mean your... um... Like a hysterectomy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, So not bottom surgery, but like a hysterectomy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So just the base, the base, like I don't want children, birth control doesn't work for me type thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in my case, birth control makes a lot of my, like, specific medical issues worse. Right. Um, right. Because it's hormonal. Right. Um, and right. IUD is incredibly painful oh. and also throws off your hormones. Yeah. Um, and for me personally, I have uh, something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Oh, yes. I, I had that as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. an IUD doesn't do anything for that. Oh, really? No. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, an IUD is just an implant to like help prevent pregnancy. Yeah, it ba- basically irritates the lining or something. Like, it, yeah, that's kind of the the work of it. Literally. Yeah. yeah. And but if you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's just going to cause like the pain that you already have sometimes uh-huh. when those cysts burst oh, to yes. be worse. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I remember. Uh, it felt like somebody was punching me in the gut, basically. Yeah. yeah. Or like took a hot iron and stabbed it through your side. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> In my case, that's, yeah. that's about what yeah. they feel like. Yeah. Um, and so I found a doctor through TikTok, luckily, um, through that list, who is going to do a radical hysterectomy. Okay, great. So that just means that, um, you know, uh, 
hysterectomy and also the ovaries. ovaries yeah, mm-hmm. because the ovaries are what cause the cysts okay, in, yeah. in the uh, yeah. PCOS. Yeah, I, I also had that done and uh, was very grateful for being for for having that done. It wasn't necessarily uh, connected with being trans. Uh, it's both. Yeah, yeah, I was like, it's both for me. It's yeah. gender affirming and then also just mm-hmm. medically. Ne- it's a medical necessity at this point. Yeah. Okay. So in my case, I have had a menstrual cycle that has lasted over seven months at one point, Uh, which has caused severe anemia, um, fainting, all the bad things. Oh my goodness. Um, they're not supposed to last that long for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to say that I, I also had something similar happen. I mean, it's same, same, um, same condition. Uh, and I was just so glad to be able to um, get that fixed because, um, yeah, like you're saying, it can cause secondary problems like anemia and just constant pain. Also, it can slingshot you into diabetes because of uh, insulin resistance. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm on a medication called metformin, which is something they give to people who are borderline diabetic or diabetic um, because it causes insulin resistance. Okay, okay. Hmm. So it's a super, super huge issue Mm. um that a lot more research needs to be done on so uh once again this is a a bit personal usually i don't get into the nitty-gritty of this you're fine but um but since we're already talking about it uh so then because you won't have ovaries anymore are you going to start um what people would consider like a female regimen of hormones or a more of a male regimen of hormones um, so technically I'll be doing both. So okay. my testosterone dosage will go up because mm. I'm, I'm on uh, 0.5 a week right now. Okay. So that's two a month, which mm-hmm. is not, which is a pretty decent dose. Okay. Um, and for is those that uh, shots, uh, the muscle. Okay. That's I am yes. intermuscular. Intermuscular. Mm-hmm. I was like, I can never remember the difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fancy mm-hmm. words. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that will go up. Um, and then eventually they said they'll switch me to subcutaneous. Okay. Probably. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they will pair me with progesterone. Okay. Because progesterone won't have feminizing effects. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but will help keep me balanced and it will lower, um, I'll still be slung, slung shot into menopause, but it won't be as bad. Yeah, and then as my T dosages go up, we will lower the progesterone, and then eventually stop it all I'm, together. I'm so glad you're getting such um, competent care. Yes, this doctor yeah. absolutely amazing, and I yeah. would highly recommend. Yeah, yeah, um, because I think that the sophistication of a lot of doctors, even if they are willing to help trans people, is probably not there. Yeah. Um, and then also, of course, there's also cultural competency. 